in the 50s and 40s, the budget process, there was no congressional budget. It was basically handled, I don't remember the number, by about 13, 14, 15 different committees. Each had a piece of the budget. Yeah. The president would send over a proposal, and they would all kind of work on their individual issues and come back with what some thought was a mess. It was completely decentralized. Yeah. Uh, 74, 1974, there's a reform that tries to centralize the process. So there is now a congressional proposal for the budget. Just as the president proposes yeah. the budget, yeah. Congress will propose its own budget. And there are budget committees in the House and Senate which theoretically have influence over all the smaller committees. Yeah. So it basically centralized the process. Yeah. Uh, the other thing it did is the budget can't be filibustered in the Senate. That was incredibly important. Uh, that was one of the rules. The idea was let's centralize this budget. We'll propose our own budget. We'll have budget committees. And when it hits the Senate, it can't be filibustered, the yeah. kind of budget. So what's happened is uh, Congress has been more forceful in budget debates. And you saw that with the shutdown of the government in the mid-90s yep. when Clinton and Gingrich uh, went into loggerheads. But also, more things are handled through the budget process yeah, yeah. because it's a way around the filibuster. Yeah. But the budget mm -hmm. uh, limits people in the following way, doesn't it? I forget the figure. You, you tell us something like 60 or 70 or 80 percent of the budget is spoken for. Yes. It must be used in certain ways under pre-existing programs, which means you don't really have a lot of money to play around with. Why don't you explain that? That's a very big phenomenon in American politics uh, that we've had. Now we have almost half of the budget is spoken for, as you said. So between Social Security, uh, between Medicare, between other kinds of, those are the two big ones. Fixed but expenses. But programs that are fixed expenses, Congress... Congressmen and women don't have a lot of room uh, to do things anymore. Uh, yep. And it keeps getting smaller and smaller. So one of the things that's happened is it's, in some ways it's weakened Congress as an institution. Because with all the fighting, with all the rancor, most of the things are already set. Yep. You know, yep. where spending is going to yep. go. Uh, another effect, some say, is it's made everything that much you know, more bitter. That because you have less to fight over, because you have $2 instead of $100 every year, those $2 become yeah. that much more valuable. Yeah. And so part of the acrimony that you see yeah. is a, frust it's a sense of frustration. You know, there's an old saying in the academic world that the reason academic right. fights are so bitter is that so little is at stake. Yeah. And I think you're saying the same thing here. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law a leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.